Good afternoon to you. Mark Sutter, HurricaneTrack.com, here with your hurricane outlook and discussion. It is Saturday, the third day of October 2020. Hope your weekend is going well. We've got a lot to talk about in the tropics, so let's get right to it, shall we? First stop, National Hurricane Center homepage, and you can see now we have four areas to keep an eye on. Of course, Tropical Storm Gamma that darn near became a hurricane, and you never know in the post-analysis where the Hurricane Center goes back in the off-season and takes a closer look at everything. Uh, with a pressure of 980 at landfall, the argument can certainly be made that the pressure was there. Um, and so we'll just have to see if there were any land observations or aircraft observations that would warrant this being upgraded to a hurricane. It doesn't matter too much. Overall, the impacts are pretty much the same between 70 miles per hour and 75 miles per hour. Uh, and it's lingering over the northeast Yucatan today. And as you can see from the forecast track here, it is going to kind of mill around in the region, bend back down to the south and west because of building high pressure up here to the north, and probably not going to have any impact directly on the United States. But I tell you what, the flood threat throughout this region, the continued heavy rain over the next few days, that's going to be fairly substantial and something that people down there need to definitely keep in mind. And they talk about that in the key messages here, that Gamma is expected to produce heavy rainfall for several days over portions of southeastern Mexico, the Yucatan, Central America, and even, yes, far western Cuba. Let's don't forget, you know, this is a pretty large circulation. I'll show you on the satellite in a moment. But this is going to be a big flood problem, and that needs to be uh, taken into consideration for sure. And the tropical storm wind is going to be hanging around in the area for the next several days. And as I mentioned yesterday, any tour operations, people down there enjoying the beautiful waters of the Caribbean or the extreme southern Gulf of Mexico, keep that in mind. Small craft, especially snorkeling, diving adventures, you name it, all of that could be very hazardous with this system hanging around the area. All right, elsewhere we have now what is Invest 92L in the Central Caribbean, and this one, this one has some potential here to become a problem. Uh, this is the leftover DNA, believe it or not, of Paulette. I kid you not. And um, it, it kind of, the, the deeper vortex of it did dissipate, and so if it regenerated, it wouldn't be Paulette from what I understand, um, but there it is, interesting feature, only a 10% chance of development, so it's probably not going to amount to anything, and then we have this system out here, way out in the Atlantic, in the central tropical Atlantic, that generally speaking, if we look at the five-day version of this outlook map, uh, that system in the central Atlantic going to move off to the northwest and not really cause any problems, but I'm telling you, this feature here we're going to definitely need to watch. It has the potential to make October, as we progress here, fairly interesting. All right, looking at things from the vorticity perspective this afternoon, and we can see there's gamma. Got the tropical storm symbol over it, but it's well-defined. This area, 92L, becoming more defined down in the Caribbean there. This, again, is the area that was once Paulette. And this is the system out in the deep tropical Atlantic. So lots of activity here to keep an eye on uh, and potential for development. It has not been a very big season in terms of long-lived, powerful hurricanes. And therefore, the ACE, the accumulated cyclone energy, is only in the low 100s right now. It's above average, but it's not 150, 175 where we probably anticipated that it would be, and what that is, is a metric to kind of indicate the quality of the season and each hurricane or storm, especially hurricane, within that season. So again, I, sometimes I use sports analogies. If a basketball team won you know, all of their games in a particular season, but they only scored an average of 78 points, uh, especially if, like if it's college basketball or and certainly the NBA, uh, that's that's not very high, but you still say, well, doesn't matter. They won all their games or they won 90% of the games or whatever. But if that same team had an average score in that very successful season 
of 120 points, then you say, wow, you know, they really stand out as being high scorers. Maybe several players on the team were scoring 30, 40, 50 points a game or whatever. You understand? So we've had lots of name storms here beyond the traditional alphabet that we use, the 21 letters. And now we've had alpha, beta, gamma. We're getting ready to have delta, I do believe. So we're looking at like 24, 25 name storms, probably a couple more after that. But compared to 2005, we haven't had these long-lived, very powerful hurricanes. Now that says nothing, and I'll end it on this, about impact. And that's not to take away at all about the impact, but we're just acknowledging that there's something different about this season. The Atlantic seems to be very favorable. We've had a lot of name storms, but they've been short-lived and generally not powerful for a long time. But the very other curious thing, and you cannot ignore this, Every one of these that has made landfall as a hurricane or near hurricane intensity with, and gamma was just so darn close. Every one of these has come in while intensifying. Isaias did. Hannah did before Isaias, of course. So let's just start over. Hannah did. Isaias did. Laura definitely did. I mean, wow. Um, and then, of course, Sally did another wow. I mean, it looked the day before landfall. It looked like it was done, like, ugh, it dried out. And you remember what Sally did there. And then today, Gamma coming in very strong. And even Paulette coming over Bermuda in the strengthening phase, um, you know, making landfall at Bermuda. That's a very interesting aspect of this hurricane season. And so, back to the topic at hand with all of these areas of energy out here, you know, there is more potential for more named storms, yes, and maybe some more ace points overall, but it's at the end of the day, it's really about impact. But I did want to talk about the seasonal ace just a little bit. Maybe we can address that some more on Monday as well, dig a little deeper, maybe get some insight from Jack, Jack Sillen, uh, as to why this season has not had as many long-lived, strong hurricanes, which is good. Nobody's complaining. But you know what? If they were all out in the Atlantic, let's say one formed here, and just kind of stayed out in the Atlantic, and it was very strong through this period right here, you know, maybe Category 3 or 4 for three or four days, that doesn't bother anybody. Maybe some shipping interest, but they can avoid them. At least they should. But we just haven't had that, really. We had Teddy. We had Paulette. And that's about it in terms of a season that looked like it was going to be very, very active and strong. Anyway, so let's get back on topic. Uh, look at the satellite imagery here, this nice loop from Tropical Tidbits. There's Gamma, and it was well on its way. I'm telling you what, another 12 hours over the water, and that could have easily been a 100-mile-per-hour hurricane coming in there. It was developing a core, very symmetrical, central, dense overcast, that round thunderstorm look to it. Uh, then we've got Invest 92L, and this one gets intriguing every day. It's really been interesting. Ever since that GFS run where it came in and rounded the corner there and went up to the Carolinas and came back and all that, you remember that? Zero Z Wednesday night into Thursday this past week. It's kind of haunted everyone like, wow. Um, now I'm not thinking that that's going to happen, but... I think this is going to be something that we're going to have to deal with down the road. Large tropical wave, high amplitude out here in the open Atlantic. And again, there's the remnants DNA, if you will, the, the fingerprint of Paulette still out there. And then, honestly, just like unbelievably, whatever, more energy, more tropical wave energy over Africa that will seed the pattern going forward. All right, so visible satellite loop, again here courtesy of Tropical Tidbits. I swear, just for a moment there, even though it was inland, looks to me like there was a brief appearance of an eye right in there. And I'll take the telestration away in a moment. Keep your eyes on it. Yep, right there. Looked like there was an eye that formed. Um, the argument could definitely be made that this <clears throat> probably attained hurricane intensity if even just for three hours or so. But nevertheless, the impacts, heavy rain over here, the Isle of Youth, western Cuba, uh, Cozumel, Tulum, where this made landfall near Cancun, all along the peninsula, and then even down 
towards Belize, Chetham Mall and points north. Um, you know, these tropical downpours, the heavy bands, etc., those can cause a lot of problems. This is gonna this is gonna hang around for a few days, and we have to understand that this is not going anywhere fast. So, you know, it's a generally flat area over the northern part of the Yucatan up here, more elevation down here, but this isn't just leaving. So the flood risk here could start to become substantial uh, if this hangs around for too long. So just be mindful, all right? If you got plans down there or you are already there, I'm sorry, but it's not looking like a very pleasant weekend as Gamma and uh, what's left of it, a little sip of water there, uh, kind of hang around. I say what's left of it, it's still pretty formidable even now that it's inland. All right, now on to 90, 92L in the Caribbean. Still kind of disorganized, but definitely signs of rotation right in here somewhere. Um, a lot of lightning indicating there's a lot of energy down there. And I think this has a chance. It's got the convergence. You can see this air coming in this way. A very sharp wave axis in here, probably, and then some mid-level turning just from, you know, what I'm looking at. And let's look at the models. I mean, might as well uh, look at the GFS and what it's showing, and then we're going to compare it to the Euro over here. All right, so the GFS, 12Z run from today. Right there, initialized 12Z. This is the 850 millibar level. There is gamma. Here's our energy down in the Caribbean associated with 92L. And these would be the two systems that we really focus on. So let's put this into motion. Gamma goes across the northeast tip of the Yucatan, uh, dies away in terms of the wind energy, <clears throat> but the rain and the overall um, vorticity of it, the you know the the leftovers, even as the wind dies away, it's still going to be a prolific rainmaker. And unfortunately, it looks like it comes back out over the Yucatan there and slides into the southeast Bay of Campeche at 72 hours here. So still a very rainy pattern, wet pattern through here. <clears throat> and the flood threat could be substantial, 10, 15, 20 inches of rain. And this will be a big problem. It really will. That cannot be... Um, you can't overstate that. There's no like, oh, you're talking about it too much. Rainfall, trust me, we've seen it enough. We've got to keep hammering at it. This is going to be a big problem. So the wind dies away, the storm surge threat dies away, but you still have all this rainfall. And then over here near the Caymans, and even before that coming through Jamaica and vicinity, uh, is 92L, well on its way by 72 hours at trying to develop. Move ahead to 96 hours and you know gamma down here in the southeast bay of Campeche again more rain for sure on um, any of these bands that form uh, and as these two kind of try to pinwheel around each other the models trying to figure out what to do with all this energy you've also got energy trying to develop south of the Gulf of Tehuantepec here in Central America southeast Mexico you got Guatemala El Salvador uh, Honduras, Nicaragua, this whole region just kind of enveloped in this monsoonal type gyre, just this large circulation, counterclockwise circulation in here with these tropical cyclones rotating around it. It's just, it's almost bizarre, but there it is. So that's 96 hours going on out now to day five, and I don't know. I mean, it, you know. <laughs> It's been really weird the way the GFS especially has been on again, off again, on again. And look at this. At day five, presumably a weak tropical storm here. There's gamma, still a tropical storm, presumably there. And then something down in the Pacific. All of these lined up yeah, pretty close to the same longitude. That's, that's getting close there. Uh, it's, it's like planets aligning. I mean, it's so bizarre. But whatever, there it is. And then you can see the general circulation pattern. Just follow those wind barbs all the way around. You know, I can put my arrows in here. It's just this huge wheel of, you know, this Central American gyre. It's just strange. I haven't seen anything like it to this extent, maybe ever. I mean, this is pretty pronounced, you got to admit. So let's see what the Euro shows. This goes out at 24-hour increments. And by the way, none of these models just a few days ago showed that 
on October 3rd, there would be nearly a hurricane sitting off of uh, Cozumel, and I can prove that. This is 12Z today. Let's go back a few days to 12Z Wednesday, valid right now. So this is the same model, the euro, three days ago or so, valid right now. That's what it had. Kind of a weak reflection, barely a tropical uh, depression, if that. And the reality, if we fast forward to today, you know, we had nearly a hurricane down there. And in my opinion, if the aircraft and other data support it, 980 pressure, I mean, come on, probably had a hurricane. But whatever, the models have been struggling this year, and I don't know why. I mean, there's some theories. We get into that at a different time. I'm going to definitely address that in Season 2 of the Hurricane Highway episodes that we're going to start working on in December. We'll talk about that later, but... Yes, it's been an odd year. So let's look at what the forecast shows. This is the initial position. Again, ECMWF, that same 850 millibar layer of the atmosphere. That's about 5,000 feet up. And this is the 12Z run. All right, so we know what we're looking at. And this goes out every 24 hours. So here it is Sunday morning, Monday morning. And you notice right here at 48 hours, there's gamma, big rain threat. I already talked about that. And... This system, 92L, trying to come together. The remnants of Paulette trying to make a little bit of a comeback there. Wouldn't that just be amazing? Uh, again, I don't think that it would be Paulette, but we'll worry about that later. They wouldn't name it that again, but whatever. So that's 48 hours at 72. Uh, the leftovers of Gamma kind of buried down here in the southeast Bay of Campeche. Meanwhile, this 92L starts to get more energized over the very warm water of the Caribbean. So you folks in the Caymans, Jamaica, and we go back just a couple frames just to illustrate this, passes over Jamaica. So and I know I've got some viewers down there, uh, YouTube followers, and it you know, goes through the Caymans. And then by day four, fairly decent system in the open central gulf there. Uh, and meanwhile, uh, Gamma making landfall again, perhaps, down in southeast Mexico, and rain, 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 big rainmaker for sure. Uh, and then at 120 hours, and this is where we'll stop, you know, again, with the three systems, there's you know, what looks like a fairly decent tropical storm in the modeling. Uh, there's Gamma, didn't make landfall yet, still there. And then more energy down here in the Pacific. And then just this overall circulation pattern. Wow, what a week ahead. Going to be really interesting to see how all of this pans out. I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen. I honestly don't. I, don't, I can't even speculate. Um, but we definitely have some in interesting systems to watch and see how things evolve over the coming days. I will say this regarding 92L. I'll just kind of throw this out there. The stronger it gets early, let's just say for the sake of argument that between Jamaica and the western tip of Cuba before it enters the Yucatan Channel, assuming that it goes through there, let's just assume that, if in that area over a two-day period it becomes a hurricane, then I think we have a bigger problem for the United States. The longer it takes to develop, the less chance that I think it has to impact the United States. And a majority of the people that watch my stuff are in the United States. That being said, again, you folks in Jamaica, the Caymans, western tip of Cuba, got to watch 92L very closely because it looks like it's going to try to develop. How much? Where does it end up? We'll all find out the end of that story together. All right, that is it for me for today. As always, thank you for tuning in. I appreciate it. Have a great rest of your Saturday. I am Mark Suddeth, HurricaneTrack.com. I'll be back with more for you tomorrow.